Right, round four is film and TV, and first up we have Chris. Okay, so my film and TV fact is about The Lion King, where everyone knows, uh, or everyone's seen Simba the Lion, story of Simba. Uh, did you know what Simba means? Anyone? Take a guess. We know the answer to that. Prince? Lion. Lion. Simba means lion. What, do, what should we call the lion? Lion. <laughs> Sounds like a good name. It'll stick. Um, I also got a few more uh, translations. Actually, before we move away from lion, so Simba means lion in Swahili, one of the dialects of Africa. Surprise, surprise, it's huge, and there's many, many languages and many, many like, dialects. The Swahili is one of the most uh, broadly spoken um, language with many dialects. Uh, there's also Afrikaans, but the other one used in the film is Zulu, which is sung at the beginning uh, in the Circle of Life song. And if you remember the very beginning bit, um, not the screaming ah, as the sun comes up, but the, the repeated, repeated line of um, Ingwanyama and Ingwanyamabala. Uh, Ingwanyama means uh, lion or king in Zulu. So there's two references to lion in the words used in The Lion King. Uh, the other names that I've translated that also have meanings um, are in Swahili. There's Sarabi, Simba's mother, Rafiki the baboon, uh, baboon. <laughs> Rafiki the baboon, and Pumba the warthog. Uh, so Sarabi means uh, mirage, um, Rafiki means friend, and Pumba means foolish. Oh, and I just actually remembered Nala means gift. Nala the pink, Simba's wife. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it. And just to throw in one more fact, that's not a Swahili translation, but the actual original name, well, no, it is. The original names for, um, for, the original name for Scar was Taka. So you have Mufasa and Taka. Uh, Mufasa is another word for king, like in Wanyama in Zulu, but it's the Swahili word for king. And um, Taka is the Swahili word for garbage. So do you think there might be a particular reason Scar was maybe angry? You know, my older brother's called King and I'm called Garbage. Yeah, favouritism there. Yeah, some deep-seated emotional damage but that was done there. The lyrics that you recited earlier, which you do so much better than I do, doesn't that mean, here comes the lion, oh yes, the lion is coming? Yeah, it's essentially Ingwanyama. It's <laughs> the most English version of that I've ever heard. <laughs> yes, here comes the lion, oh the lion is coming! <laughs> So Ingwanyama, Ingwanyam is just the lion, lion bit. So essentially you could directly translate it to lion, lion is coming. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've said that a couple of times or so. Ingwanyama, Ingwanyama, Bala. That hmm. gets repeated many times. Excellent. Okay, so next we've got Laura. I really want to follow that up. Oh, go on. Is it, I'm sure it's a good... Okay, good so... Um... Quite a famous film house is the MGM or Metro Goldwyn Mayer uh, Film Studios, um, and we've all seen the Roaring Lion in its Roaring caption. This, yeah, the, the introduction. The, ca- the introduction yeah. caption. Title yeah, caption. The, the title caption. Um, but it's not actually one lion. In the whole of the history of it, it's actually five different lions altogether. Um, it starts with Slats, who began his uh, filmography, I guess in 1917 and went on until 1928. He originally appeared as the logo in the Goldwyn Predictors Corporation, which went on to become the Metro Goldwyn Meyer Productions. Um, and the designer, Howard Dietz, chose the liner as a mascot as a tribute to his alma mater, Columbia University, and its athletic teams, the Lions. Um, when that lion sadly died in 1936, it was buried on a farm and its grave was marked with a big granite slab and a pine tree to hold the lion spirit down. Fair enough. Uh, then we had Jackie from 1928 to 1956. Uh, Jackie was the first MGM lion to make his voice heard thanks to the gramophone. Uh, he introduced MGM's first sound production, White Shadows in the South Seas, with a roar, which we all recognise now as part of a quite... Symbolic. Symbolic uh, part of the movies and classic movies. Another fact about Jackie is that he survived two train wrecks, an earthquake, a boat sinking, an explosion at the studio, oh, and a plane crash that left him stranded in the Arizona wilderness for several days because the pilot Martin Jensen left the cat with some snacks while he went in search of help. 
He did get along with other felines, though. One night, an alley cat and her kittens crawled into Jackie's cage for shelter, and when they were found later, the kittens were dripping wet from Jackie licking them clean, um, not eating them. Uh, then you have Tanner from 1934 to 1956 and George 1956 to 1958. There's not much known about these guys. Uh, and then you move on to Leo from 1957 to present day. He is the MGM's longest serving lion and was also the youngest at the time his role was filmed. In addition, Leo's appeared in films as well as just the fil- as the picture house's logo. He appeared in several Tarzan movies and the Tarzan television adaptation as well as many other films hmm. well let's get this straight like 1953 is he still going oh, he still acor- uh, according to the you know the where, piece of paper you have in front yeah, of me according to the piece of paper that uh, I have in front of me I, I, the other ones had relatively short tenures didn't they and he's been going for nigh on 70 years now good god <laughs> we started well, maybe as the they, they, star and maybe they just haven't replaced Line as it were, and they just keep it. No, 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 I, I, I completely believe that they have used the same soundbite of that one shot again. Yes, that's the one. We'll use that on our films. And then he was carried on to do his work. Not going to each film go, hey, let's get you back in. <laughs> Come on, record this guy. Pro- I just pro- like pro- the idea that Jackie, the second one, survived so many sort of Indiana Jones, James Bonds esque sort of situations. Yeah, and they should explode. have just basically filmed the line. <laughs> hmm, yeah. Cool. Okay, and next fact we have is Dave's. For film and TV for me, if I was to ask who is a very famous TV animal, or D cat, sorry, that you guys would think of, Chris, who would you say? How about Tony? Tony the Tiger. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) I'd say Garfield. And what? I'm going to go with Felix, just to be awkward. Cool. No one said Tom from Tom and Jerry, so that failed spectacularly. But no, that's because I knew where you were going with your facts. I'm sat right yeah, next I can to see you, you. <laughs> as well. and I was quoting Doctor Doolittle. But no, yeah. If you mention Cartoon and Cat, the place your mind really goes is Tom from Tom and Jerry. I believe the other most common one that people go for is the Cheshire Cat. Oh, no, you said Cartoon one. Cat, then yeah. But yeah, for, so how old do you Maybe think Tom and Jerry are, Chris? Oh, good. <laughs> oh, gracious. Since the two people who can see my fact sheet. I'm no, going to say... Got to be in the 40, that's 75... 70? <laughs> We're going with 70. Yes. 75. Oh! <laughs> 75 in 2015, so it's 76 now. So Tom and Jerry first debuted. Do you know what Tom originally was called? I do, and I can't remember it for the life of me. On his debut... Jasper. Correct. They originally debuted in February 1940 in a, sm- in a short, and they were called Jasper and Jinx, and only became Tom and Jerry after Hanna-Barbera offered a studio employees a prize of $50 to come up with the best name. Obviously, this was 75 years ago. $50 worth so slightly more yeah. than it is now employee bonus. But uh, in terms of other changes, Jerry's physical appearance hasn't really changed. What can you do with a brown, cute mouse? But... Tom has had quite a few changes. Originally, he had a rounder face and shaggier fur. Uh, there are quite a few different iterations. If you you probably remember the blue or grey looking uh, Tom and Jerry, if you Google him, the most yeah. recent iteration uses the new animation style of computer animation, which makes it look quite flat and also quite um, well. You can take a look and Google this at home, but that's what the most modern Tom and Jerry looks like in the bottom yeah. there. So it it keeps the same aesthetic, the 50s look, but it's clearly not the same. It's a bit like when you watch a Simpsons episode and you're like, wow, this is an old one versus the newer ones. Yeah. As long as they do the formula right, it's not a problem. But in terms of the formula for Tom and Jerry, it is pretty much sibling rivalry, which is why they it is a timeless classic and why 75 years later, it's still going strong. Mm. My final question for this one would be, who do you think's older? Tom from Tom and Jerry? Or Tom Jones. Or if they're seventy six yeah. now, Sir Tom's yeah. what seventy four? Do no. you think he's younger? I think he's younger. Yeah. I'm they gonna debu- say older. Just be older. They have the same birthday. They debuted six months of, uh, four months apart. Sorry, oh. and by debuted I mean Tom Jones was born in June. Yeah, in June 7th, 1940. So he is 76, and Tom is also 76. So, same age as Tom from Tom and Jerry. Not unusual. It's it's highly unusual. (laughs) 
My, 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 pussy Delilah. <laughs> Anyone? Huh? What's new, pussycat? It's whoa, all like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Does anyone remember the highly stereotyped uh, black woman that used to own Thomas before it became slightly more PC? Didn't we talk about this in we last did. episode? Yeah, yeah, we did. I bet you she had some horribly typecast name like Jemima or something. I think like it that. was Jemima. I, I remember. I remember this where she was portrayed as cat. Oh, the yeah. third world country would be rough with the cat, not nice to the cat, and Jerry would always put Tom in trouble, or she would put Tom out yeah, because she, she didn't tr- know that the mouse was there. Or she'd try and get set him on the mouse and then and then he wouldn't catch the mouse so he'd be in trouble for not catching the mouse. Kids, watch some of the older stuff. You wouldn't believe what we were allowed to say back then. Oh, yeah. You've reminded me. We were talking about the water bear. <laughs> so long ago. Water bear? I was coming up with the animal that could possibly not be drugged. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. the water bear. Is there actually this a bear is, called the water bear? This is actually insanely interesting the first time I read it. The, it's most easy to pronounce name is water bear. Its actual name is the tardigrade. I know these things. These are the, like the little... These are the, the like, tiny less things. than a mill... I think, I think it's like 0. 0.6 of a millimetre. But if you zoom mm. in on them, like... It's, that doesn't count. Si- no, 0. 0.6 of a millimetre isn't that small. That is a lot of cells. So the tardigrade can survive 2 degrees Kelvin. It can survive 420 yep. degrees Kelvin. Some, like, yeah. in, in case we're not clear, two degrees above absolute zero, so minus 271, yep, 271 degrees C, up to like positive 200 and something degrees. It can survive zero atmospheres. It can survive... T- Radiation. It, they've not been able to get it to a pressure where they can damage it, so like 100 times Earth's atmosphere. Radiation, it's in... It doesn't get affected by radiation. They've put it into gamma ray, not into gamma rays, but into the most radioactive conditions that they can simulate in the labs. Still does nothing. This thing is the most invulnerable creature on the planet. Yes, I have heard of this one. But, I don't know. I can't really take over the world with them, can you? (laughs) You On my tardigrade army. (laughs) (laughs) Ride, beasties, ride! All right, so for round four, film and TV, are we going to go with Chris's Lion King's names, Laura's Five Lions on the MGM, or Dave's Tom and Jerry Atrix? For me, I would have to say that the most interesting one is The Lion King, purely because I love hearing my brother singing in Swahili. I take it back. So, so So, uh, that'll be my choice. Cool. Laura. Yeah, the African in me has to go with the the, the, the Lion King. We yeah, we did have two cats called Simba and Nala, despite being sisters. Let's not go into that. Um, and the fact that Mum did try to teach us Swahili when that film came out. That's I'm a baboon. Do you know what Asantisan actually means? Monkey's uncle. <laughs> oh, oh, the Lion King facts are all coming out now. It means good morning, sorry. It means good morning. <laughs> sorry, I didn't realise everyone. everyone was looking at me, for those of you that can't see me. Hi, anyway. Of course. Um, well, I'm not going to vote for myself, even though I've been told I can, um, because that would just be uh, cruel and tragic. So I'm going to... Too gonna, much like usual. I'm going to be voting for the next best thing, which is David. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Fantastic. And I am also going to go with David. So that means that both Chris and Dave... Win round four. So everything's to play for.